Now as an alternative, which will especially happen if you have a very small or very large slope, uh, and it's going to be probably better to use this form. Okay, so what we do is uh, we put the equation into the form y equals mx plus b. The equation's in this form. Okay, we solve for y. And we get the form y equals mx plus b. Uh, plot the y-intercept, which is 0b. And then construct a good-sized fundamental triangle with one vertex at 0b. Um, now I'll mention the slope. will be M. Now this is something, this fundamental triangle, something unique. Uh, I, I'm sure I'm not the only person that uses this triangle this way, but I, I, I don't know of any author that actually uses this terminology that everybody should. Because obviously everybody wants to do what I do. Okay, so anyhow, that's something that everybody's familiar with, but when we do this, even if you're not familiar with the terminology, you'll see what I mean. Okay. And then we extend the hypotenuse to form the line. That is, we get the fundamental triangle, okay, take the hypotenuse and extend it, and there's our line. And then we check as before. We find a point not too close to um, either of the vertices of the fundamental triangle. I don't see what I mean by that. Um, and plug it in and see if it fits this original equation. Even if it fits this equation, you don't care because this is the equation you're trying to fit. And if I find the top of the board, I can get it up here. Okay. So, now we take, I'm going to just illustrate it with, actually I'll illustrate it with an equation where you want to actually use it. Let's say you have um, 8x plus y equals 16. Simple enough equation. It's easy to find your intercepts. Okay? Your intercepts would be zero, 1 and sixteen Sorry, it means 0, 16, and one, uh, 16, 0, and 0, 2. Okay, so we have out here 16, 0. In other words, y is 0. I've got it backwards again. Okay. If x is 0, y is 16. So we've got to have the point 16, 0 up here. There's our y-intercept. Our x-intercept occurs when y is 0. When y is 0, 8x is going to be 16, x is going to be 2. So we've got 16 here and we've got 2 here. Okay, well, that's pretty steep. And if we haven't located this point pretty accurately compared to this point, our slope is going to be off and the slope of our picture is going to be off. For example, if we had another equation uh, with a y-intercept of 3, and we put 3 here, and our x-intercept was, let's say, 15, Okay, well, that might not be too bad. We might get a decent point of intersection on the two lines if that's what we're looking for. Uh, if we had, let's say, 15 here and 3 here, things would be less useful. Anyhow, you're going to run into it. If one intercept is much smaller than the other, then you might end up in trouble. You might not. Um, so, you might want to do this. Okay, so we solve for y and put it in the form y equals mx plus b. And we're going to subtract 8x from both sides. We're going to get y equals negative 8x 
plus 16. And it occurs to me that this really isn't going to help a lot. Okay? So some of what I said might not be true. Still, we have this alternative. So we're going to see how we do this. Okay? Um, Okay, so we're going to graph this. What did I say we're going to do? We're going to take the y-intercept. Which is 0, 16. So here's point zero sixteen, And then we're going to construct a large fundamental triangle with a slope of negative 8. Okay, so for a large fundamental problem, I'm going to choose a run. I'm not going to choose a run of one. Okay, if I chose a run of one, I could go over one unit here and down eight units, and I'd get a triangle with a slope of negative eight. Okay? If I wanted to do a run of two, I could come over here, two units, and I'd have to go down 16. So I'm kind of playing around with it. I can see this. I want to make it larger. I don't want to make it too large. If I come all the way out here, I'm going to be off the board. But I'm going to come out four units. Okay, so I'm going to come over four. So I'm going to have a run of four. Now what's my rise going to be? Well, slope is rise divided by run. So slope, so rise equals slope times run. Now we've done this, we did this earlier, so we understand this. And that's going to be negative 8 times 4, which is negative 32. Okay, so I've got to have a rise of negative 32. Now I'm starting up here at 16, I'm going to have a rise of negative 32. If I start at 16 and go 32 units down, I end up at what? Think about it. Okay, negative 16. So here's negative 16. So I'm going to come over, well, I'm going to come down 16 units, and here's my triangle. I didn't quite close it up correctly, but you see the idea. Okay, so the rise is negative 32. And that gives you slope, rise divided by run equals negative 8. You want to check that out, make sure you have it right. And then we can extend this hypotenuse. And we've got our line. We can then take some point that's not close to much of anything, okay? So let's say that, okay, right here we have x equals 4 at this point. So let's go to uh, x equals, why not? Um, don't really want to use a point between here and here, but I don't have much room away from here. So I'm going to just pick a point down here. Estimate its, x, its y coordinate, and I'm going to estimate its x coordinate. 
Well, it looks like the x coordinate. If that's four, that's two. That looks like about five. Here. Down here, let's see, it's this much, which is less than 16, but well, more than half of 16. Um, so this distance is probably like 12, and it's negative, so we get negative 28. So now we check. In the original equation, not in the one we solved for y, we plug these numbers in, and we get um, 8 times 5 plus negative 28 equals 16. Now you do the arithmetic yourself, what you get is 12 equals 16. That's not great, and it's not terrible, but it's plausible that we have the correct straight line here.